Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to another Railway Empire video. This is part three of our playthrough of uh, the Dominion Day scenario from the Great Lakes DLC. And in the, if you haven't seen parts one and two, I'd encourage you to go watch them. Uh, lots of good stuff there about the new, uh, about how to use warehouses in the new DLC. So now we have a task. Our new tasks are to hook up Halifax and Moncton, which are two towns over there to the east. Uh, Halifax is about as far east as you can go in Canada. And it's significant because it has a trading post that gets cloth. And as you know, we've had that, fur, that winter clothes business up there in Saguenay that has uh, just... Uh, caused this issue. So what we're going to do is set up the ability to take it cloth from Halifax. So we're going to do our hookup and I'm looking to see what's the best way to hook up and what I'd really like to do is run the warehouse, the connection from our warehouse here all the way over to uh, the Halifax area and be able to uh, create the cloth because Halifax trades logs for cloth. So we want to be able to create that cloth and then ship that cloth over here to this factory that's been driving us crazy the whole game. So um, that's the plan and that's what I'm doing here is just kind of figuring out what the line is going to look like. And it's a big, long, expensive line with a giant bridge in it. Uh, so it's, it's not, not a cheap investment by any stretch. And I kind of realize at a point that, I, that I'm almost ahead of myself here. I'm thinking too far ahead. I'm thinking of, um, you know, ultimate thing you want to do is take advantage of that cloth and get it over to the rest of your system. But we have specific goals here to hook up these two towns. So you'll see, you will see I, I take a little change in tact uh, to get that started. But here we're going to put a warehouse near Halifax so they can pick up that cloth and deliver goods to Halifax. And then we're going to run, and I'm, I'm picking which slot I want to use here. Remember, I'm trying to use point-to-point -point dedicated lines for the most part. Not totally, but for the most part. And so I'm trying to pick which line I want. I know there's logs down there kind of, kind of southwest uh, of Moncton, we're going to want those to go into Halifax because that's what we need to trade for the cloth. So I left a line for that. We're going to want to be able to hook up with Moncton with the warehouse. Might as well have the warehouse serve two purposes. And now we're looking at this uh, um, connection with the warehouse and we're talking uh, almost a million dollars. And we can cut down the cost a little bit by uh, eliminating that bridge right there, but we're still looking at a million dollars and a half a million dollar bridge. So even as we get rid of these little bridges, we're still, it's a, it's a tough place to go because you got a lot of mountains, you gotta work your way around the mountains, then you gotta cross that giant uh, waterway build a huge bridge and you got to get over our existing track that goes from Saguenay down to uh, Quebec. So I'm looking at that and saying, oh, that's not bad, $843,000, that's not bad. And then I'm looking over here and saying, well, wait a minute, I've already got a connection I'm going to need some of this stuff, and I've already got a connection over here. I've already crossed that river once, so to speak, over on the Montreal side. So maybe a change of plan is in order here.
So right there, I'm seeing how long would it take me to get that 900 grand to build that uh, road? And how long do I have to do this? I've got uh, till 1866, so my time's okay. So I take off and say, all right, uh, let's, let's just accumulate the cash and build that big old uh, expensive uh, route. So right here, I think I actually got a little bit confused. I was looking at um, Montreal and thinking that Montreal had a cloth factory, so why can't I take my Montreal to Saguenay line and just convert that to a automatic line? In fact, I'm going through and making sure the, the lines Montreal to Quebec and Montreal to Saguenay are automatic because we want goods moving back and forth. And then eventually I'll realize that, well, you may have a cloth business in Montreal, but it's worthless because you don't have any access to cotton yet. And that's why the Halifax is so important is because it can get you the cloth without cotton because it can import the cloth. So um, while all this is great to turn these into automatic lines because we want to you know, be running our beer and meat back and forth and what have you. Um, so here I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't need that big long line. Let's just go ahead and hook up and get our uh, business going with uh, Halifax. So I'm going to buy that logging camp out there and run a line, set up a line to go into the warehouse with logs, which will then go into Halifax, which will then be traded off for cloth. So we're going to set up that part of it first. So we're going to use the lowest line. Remember, I'm still trying to do the dedicated lines, and you'll see what I end up doing here. I don't know if I'd recommend this, this approach. So you can watch this and kind of see what it works, but I, I'm not crazy about it. So we're going to set up a line to run the logs into the warehouse. And again, the logs will be converted into uh, cloth through trade. And then eventually we'll set up uh, a way to use that cloth to our advantage. So there we go, we've got a simple line. All we need to do is say, uh, figure out what we want. So we want to uh, get wheat, we want logs, and we want cloth, of course. So now the good news is, even though we haven't connected Halifax to the rest of our network, it's the next station that we're connecting. So we can go ahead and connect things to Halifax or to that warehouse. In fact, that warehouse, we haven't even connected to Halifax. What am I saying? We just have a warehouse out there that happens to be close to Halifax. So we have not technically connected to Halifax yet. So what we're going to do here, here's, here's the way we're going to get our quick connection. We're going to run the wheat which we need anyway from the system from over here where we already have the wheat field in fact we own that wheat and we're going to run it over here connect it into that log line that we just set up and that's going to give us the ability to actually have our connection because once we connect two cities to that warehouse 
we are connected to our network. Because of course that wheat goes into Montreal, into our, into our network. Now here's where I start implementing what I was talking about. I'm doing dedicated lines, and I want to have dedicated uh, this this um, I want to have dedicated uh, places for the each line to come in, so it has its own platform. But I'm going to, I'm doing it a little different way here, a little different technique, where I'm going to uh, actually set up merge to the main trunk line. But then, you know, if you're going into that uh, first platform, you take that right hand two uh, tracks. If you're going into the second platform, you take this uh, these third and fourth uh, tracks. And that kind of gets you out of the way, gets you moving along into your um, platform, but keeps you from holding up other stuff that's coming in. So this is just a different technique for, for uh, using multiple platforms at a station, in this case in a warehouse. Um, can't say I love this one. It just it looks kind of messy. Uh, Could have used. I'll, I'll, you'll see later on. Uh, I use more. I don't know what you might think of as quote normal unquote uh, uh, track layout to do multiple tracks. But anyway, this is just just something different. So now we're going to hook up. There we go. So now once we hook up that line, we hooked up Moncton. So now. Our first task is done. We've hooked up Moncton to our network because remember this uh, that warehouse line goes back to the wheat, which is connected to Montreal. So now we're connected to our network. So we've got Moncton online, but we haven't connected Halifax, even though there's a warehouse down there right next to Halifax. Reason being, of course, it's not really truly connected. It, it's going an overland. The warehouse goes feeds Halifax overland. So we're going to put a little station in here in Halifax, even though we're never going to use it. It's just going to sit there, and we're going to build one little line that runs over to uh, one of the platforms in the warehouse. Our efforts here are significant. And there we go. Now we have our connection to Halifax. So we've got them both done. From the United Kingdom. And looking good there. So we did that very quickly. And now we want to think about how are we going to get um, take advantage of that cloth. But right now we're going to feed some um, um, wheat into the Halifax warehouse. And and we're feeding logs into that warehouse. And notice we have to send wood to Halifax and we have to transport loads of cloth. And transporting the loads of cloth, of course, we have to have some place to send them to. Now, one thing we could have done here is just build a second warehouse a, a, a few miles from that first warehouse and just move the cloth literally from one warehouse to the, the other. I think that would have... Uh, um, closed out the task, but that would be pretty cheesy. And we want to do something that's going to be useful to the, our overall economy as well. So I'm starting to do a little more train research than I usually do, because I know there's the two new, I want to get those two new trains is where I want to go. But I also want to have a True Express train. So right here, we're going to get a True Express train at Rogers American, which is a fast train for this time period. And we're going to use that new functionality they've given us, that new filter on the um, global replacement of trains, to, um, to our advantage here in a minute, as soon as we have some cash stored up. But right now, we're going to set up a line between Moncton and the warehouse. So now, those goods that are coming into the warehouse 
can feed the growth of Halifax, but also feed the growth of Moncton because um, we can set up this simple little line that runs between the warehouse and Moncton, and that's going to allow that line to take goods out of the warehouse and take them to Moncton. And we can even even put uh, Moncton's beer, Moncton has a brewery if we wanted to, we could run beer back to uh, the warehouse. And to tell you the truth, I don't think we ever did that. But it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it, we would have to get to the point where Halifax was bigger to do that anyway. So, um, and what we want to do here is have, again, a dedicated line for that. So I'm, so I'm building... I set it up, and, I, and so now I'm going to build yet a, a third line that's coming out here. You notice how each one of them gets a little farther out. But that will give the ability to come into that third platform and also um, get you out of the way so you're not holding up everybody else who's queued up to go to the warehouse. So this isn't that, you know, if I think about it, it's not that bad an approach, but it's just not beautiful. So what I decided to do here is get rid of the... Um, supply tower I'm actually going to move it because my lines are starting to come in here and instead of worrying about the the tower uh, and trying to deal with it I'm just going to say well let's just eliminate the problem and get rid of the tower so we're kind of using an old school technique here this goes back to like track layout 101 to to uh, do these little hookups here and now we're going to tell the um, warehouse to go over to platform three which isn't being used that's for the Moncton run so now the Moncton run will be out of the way and um, and now that I'm watching this I'm thinking should have reversed all this I should have had my busiest line which would be the logs go into that number three because it has the longest lead up and that way the log line, if that happens to be jam up, can actually move out of the way and let the rest of them function. The Moncton one only, I'm only running a couple of trains, so it's going to have the least likely um, impact on traffic. Should have run it into the first one. So, hmm, that's a thought. Just food for thought for next time. If you have a, a line with a lot of trains, use the longest run up on it, of course, because that way the trains can get out of the way in case there's a problem in case they are causing the uh, traffic jam. And it's not a big deal one way or the other, it doesn't matter. So here I finally figure out, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> My weaving factory can't get cotton, so it's worthless. It's not going to send any cloth up there to Saguenay. So the way we're going to get cloth is back to where, back to when this video started, which is this big line. So now we need to hook up a line that goes um, from our warehouse and gets over the river and hooks up with the lines we've already created. Now the good news is, of course, since we've already spent all that money to make these lines, all we have to do is hook up up here, and it's a shorter, less expensive. Total cost is probably the same, but, but it seems cheaper because we're not spending as much money right now. Now I'm trying to use the new functionality from version 1.4 and make that flat crossing uh, across that line. Um, of course, that that's a busy line. Now this is, I would say, bad move on my part to do that. It would have been better just to build a bridge coming out of that uh, warehouse. Uh, it wouldn't be horribly expensive. We got good money now. It could it actually matches elevations better coming out of that warehouse than going over here to what we're looking at on the right where you've got high so it's, you know it's kind of a high to high thing so you'd have a, a pretty flat run for their trains and we could get across this um, and double track down through here and of course all this is so that we can deliver cloth to uh, Saguenay but um, uh, the second line is going to be just impossible to put in because look we don't have any room and you know if we're going to try to do a double cross here um, because you got those mergers coming out of those two lines from Saguenay I, it's just going to be really difficult to get that to fit in there properly so I struggle with it and struggle with it and finally decide to um, you know go to plan B and and uh, not and just do part of the uh, cross, you know, just have a single line crossing the tracks. And again, it would have been 
even better if I had just built a bridge. Uh, a bridge with double tracks would have been more efficient. It wouldn't have cost that much money and it, it would have uh, kept trains from crossing that busy line. But it, that busy line is not that busy. I mean, there are definitely trains coming through there, but it's not like it's constant. So here you go, I'm just gonna cut it off right here and build this one side of the connection and that way I can get my double track and then the trains can just wait there, cross over, go into the warehouse and wait on, wait on the train prior to come out before they go, the next one comes in. So it'll all work great. It, wor it works just fine, but, but a better design, I think, would have been just bite the bullet and build the bridge coming out of that warehouse. So we're waiting to accumulate a little cash so that we can uh, build that, uh, finish off that line going from our warehouse in Halifax, basically connecting all the way into the warehouse in Saguenay. And that's going to allow us to ship cloth. So we've got two requirements going. We've got ship wood to Halifax and ship cloth. And they're basically kind of telling you, I mean, it's just like the tasks are practically telling you what, what, what you should already be doing anyway, which is take advantage of that import to import the cloth, which uh, your, need, your whole system needs. And um, in order to do that, you need to ship wood. So they basically tell you ship wood, which is what you would need for the cloth, and ship cloth, which is what you need to improve your whole economy. So... The tasks are just almost like a to-do list here. They're not really, uh, I mean, it's just what you should be doing anyway. That's what I'm trying to say. So now we've got our line going, and now we can set up a line, which is going to take stuff out of uh, the Saguenay warehouse and move it to the, um, the Halifax warehouse. Sorry, <laughs> my brain is dying on me here. And we're going to run one the other direction. And about right here, where I'm only seeing the one train, I'm wondering what's going on. So I, I realize I, I haven't set all my signals, so shame on me. You should always be in a rhythm where you lay your tracks, set your signals, put in your supply towers, then run your lines. And occasionally, if, when you get out of rhythm, uh, you know, it just sort of, uh, get out of order, it just sort of messes you up a little bit. But I'm still perplexed as to why there's only one train coming here. There we go, now there's two. It was just slow getting out the first time. So now we're going to set it up to run into the appropriate um, platform up in um, Halifax, and now we're good to go. And you can see there goes there goes some cloth out. Uh, there goes a shipment of cloth off to uh, on its way to Saguenay now. So good deal. So we've got our logs coming into the warehouse. At, Halifax they're being consumed by Halifax which gives us credit for shipping them as Halifax consumes them and we've got our cloth going over to the warehouse near Saguenay and we'll get credit for those uh, I would think since it's a shipment requirement we'll get credit for those as soon as they hit the warehouse on the other end Now the good news is, of course, too, that warehouse in um, Saguenay has a lot of good stuff to help cities grow. That's going to come over to our warehouse in, in Halifax, and both Halifax and Moncton can grab those goods, and we're going to be able to, to leverage our warehouses to not only keep Saguenay happy, but to help grow Moncton and Halifax because we're going to be shipping goods to both those cities through the warehouse network.
Now, since I know that cloth is on its way, and that tailor is going to go from being worthless to being valuable, why not buy it? So we're going to own the tailor, and that tailor is going to create winter clothing, and we're going to have customers for it. We already have lines set up where it can uh, ship its um, goods. And the overseas goods are highly valued at home. Lovely to see more commodities arriving from the North American colonies. And there we just hit our wood shipment requirement, so we've got our 35 wood shipped off to Halifax. Won't be too long till we get our cloth. And we need, just need more and more wood. We need to keep, uh, keep the wood in that uh, warehouse supply because the wood, uh, the thing about these, uh, all these trading posts that are trading for wood, the, the wood is also used to help build the city. So it, it, it's a popular thing. And now remember we took out, well, we, <laughs> I took out uh, the um, uh, supply tower. So now I've got our locomotives running without supplies. So we've got to put one back in. We'll just move it down a little ways closer to, more toward Moncton away from our, all those merges that we set up. Put a couple in there. So remember, this is my favorite mistake is to forget my warehouses. So back to what I was saying about the rhythm. Lay your track, set your signals, put in your supply towers, then set your lines. Keep it in that order and then you don't get messed up. And I, of course, violate that rule constantly. So those guys, as soon as they pass through the supplies again, will be fine. And we see that we not only do we think we needed more trains, but we need more logs. So we're going to bump that up a little bit and keep the logs moving. And that um, <clears throat> that uh, trading post can really consume the logs. I mean, you've got to really pump a lot of a lot of logs in there to keep keep it going. And we're looking to see how we're doing. Yes, we are getting shipments of um, uh, cloth. And we want to set up more lines. And this is where I, I, I realized, I don't know, it says warehouse to warehouse. Our line's warehouse to warehouse. And I'm not even sure which one we're looking at here. And I wanted to get the one that started in Halifax to grab cloth. Um, but I don't even know which one it was. So um, you'll see what I try to do here in, in a minute. And it gets it's kind of interesting what happens. So now here the snow hits and we're our whole system is grinding to a halt. I really like this, by the way. I like the snow, uh, the way they've done it. I like the way they've done the warehouses. I think this is just a tremendous update to an already awesome game. And it, it, it just it creates such an interesting challenge. And I'm, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but uh, I, there's some cool stuff coming up. Uh, about the snow and the, and the uh, warehouses and all that good stuff. So now we've got some money. I want to go ahead and get those express lines or those passenger mail lines set up with a faster train. Remember we'd taken a look at that earlier and just didn't quite have the funds. And while we're just kind of waiting on stuff to happen here, we're just waiting on the cloth to ship. But um, a quick comment is that the way you, you see how we got over a million dollars now, unless you're saving up to buy out a competitor, that's about the only time I've seen in this game where you want to actually, quote, save, unquote, your money. You should be spending your money as fast as you can. In fact, the way I try to play is that I, as soon as I have money, I build a new line or build a new station, put more trains out, whatever, until I'm broke again. And then I play it, let the game run for a little bit to give me some more money, and then I go do it again. I think you should always be investing your money as quickly as you can, particularly in these scenarios, because they have time limits and you've got to build everything up as quickly as you can. So anything that you can do that you can build something that's going to make you more money, that's going to increase your revenue, 
go do it. Don't hesitate. Don't let sit there and hold cash. And the exception I would say to that was, if you notice, if you think back to part one and part two, particularly part one of this series right here, I held off a little bit on my initial buildings there because I wanted to see what the scenario was going to make us do. And so I didn't want to spend a bunch of money putting together like a big, you know, four, four city cluster out of our original four cities and then come to find out that I need to do something totally different and that spending all that money means I really can't do what it is I, the scenario wants me to do. So there's two cases where you might hold off on your money. One is when you're getting your feet wet in a, in a scenario and you're trying to figure out what are they going to make us do, uh, you might want to hold off a little. And then the other one would be to accumulate money to buy somebody out. Here is the interesting thing. I renamed this warehouse to the uh, HALWH, the Halifax Warehouse. But look what happens. See what it says up there? The route says Warehouse to Warehouse 9. It didn't pick up the name. It, it, thinks, it thinks that um, it's calling it Warehouse 9, which is probably... Uh, you know, a behind-the-scenes name it has for it. But it should be displaying to me Warehouse to Warehouse How, or, or H-A-L-W-H. So the whole reason I, I named one end of that was so I could tell which side I was doing. So I actually got frustrated and said, well, if I can't tell which one it is, I'll just build another line that, that literally starts with the uh, Halifax end so I know that it's working correctly. And you notice we're also running our, we're still running Philadelphia's for our freight. So now I'm looking at, okay, why can't we just uh, uh, replace all those? And this is where the changes, they almost got it, didn't quite. I couldn't figure out a way to really change what I wanted here without changing the those, um, passenger and mail lines as well. So I got a little frustrated. If somebody's got a smart way to do that, so, so here's the challenge. See if you can tell me how to do this. I've got freight train. I've got trains running all over the place with automatic lines. And I've got a few lines set up as passenger and mail. And I have replaced the passenger and mail using the new functionality with faster trains. Good for me. I now would like to replace all, all the rest of my trains with a freight train, but I don't really have a good way to identify them to say change those, but don't change the passenger trains because freight won't get it. it. Just think that over and, and help me out here. Help me figure out a way to do that. Um, what I ended up doing later was actually I just replaced every train across the map and then replaced the passenger trains again with a different train. Until local productions will reach a comparable level. So here we go. We've finished off our cloth. Looking good. I have decided to delegate full responsibility to you. This is a great honor, which comes with the. All right. So we've met our objectives. I'm going to have to talk over uh, Sir Watkin. We've met our objectives, and uh, so we're going to cut off this episode here, and we'll take up with our next set of challenges in part four in granting the colonies a higher level of independence. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.